Welcome to the I Love Negotiating Podcast, where we aim to equip you with the practical strategies, techniques, tactics, and tools to dramatically improve your negotiation results. My name is Jan Potgieter. Over the past 15 years, I've consulted to and trained many of the world's leading brands in more than 60 countries to help them improve their business negotiation results. I've trained just under 10,000 people face-to-face in a small group format, and I've negotiated on camera one-on-one with almost 4,000 people from most major cultural backgrounds. In this podcast, I want to use my experience to bring perspective to your negotiation challenges. Today, we're fortunate to be joined by Corinne Vigru. And, uh, you know, Corinne has been, for me, an inspirational leader. I've known her for for, for some time, and she's always had the opportunity. um, Well, she's always made the opportunity to defy the odds, I think. And uh, I'm I'm really fortunate to be um, in your company today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, yeah. First question I have for you, Corinne, is, uh, you know, how has, has TomTom managed to be so super successful in, in, in what is a really competitive industry? I mean, you guys have gone up against some of the biggest guys in business and you're still here. Yeah, I think, I think we, we were there before the big guys came and disrupted us. I think it's been, uh, it's been a long story. I mean, we've celebrated our 25 year this year. I think the, the, I think resilience is probably the word that describes best how we managed to uh, to survive and a long term vision as well and a dream. I think we, um, you know, when we we was, we invented and we democratized navigation, things went through the roof. And you remember uh, our sales meeting in two thousand and seven where we were kind of walking on clouds and and there was no stopping us. And then two thousand and eight, the crisis and. Uh, um, and then you you need to really think very long and hard about what you're doing. But I suppose we always have this uh, vision of uh, of getting maps in real times, of uh, developing some technologies, which today is very useful for for autonomous driving. So in technology, as long as you use you look identify problems and you keep working at it, how you're going to solve those problems, then then you know you. You hang on in there, so it's a long-term vision, a good team of people, and uh, and not uh, yeah keep keep solving problems we see along the way. Okay, good. So, um, and, and I, I guess this is a question you've often been been asked. But so negotiation is a broad concept, right? But in in its original definition in Latin, it, it, it just means doing business, really. Yeah. So. In your experience, what would you say would be the difference between men and women when it comes to to doing business or negotiation? I know this question has the potential to be loaded depending on which part of the world you ask it. But from your perspective, what what is your view? Yeah, I've never seen that. I've never seen it as an issue. Actually, I, I only realized there was a gender issue very uh, late in the process when I one day you know, I guess I was reading and I realized, hey, yeah, yeah, looking around me, there were not many women. But I suppose it's never been. I've been in technology. For since being in my career, so I've kind of been used of walking around, and I suppose at some point you you forget about the gender the, the gender side of things. But I do believe that men and women deal with things differently, and I think that. Um, uh, but again, it's it's always difficult to generalize. Uh, the, the, but I think they're probably a little bit more. I would say maybe empathy, a different way of of negotiating. Um, but I can be really tough as well, so I don't know. I, I think that's, uh, uh, yeah. I, I, I don't like to to think too much in terms of yeah. of gender. It's more the way the outside world perceive you. But uh, so I think that's. Uh, I don't know. That's an interesting perspective. So, so when it comes to business negotiations, what is your, what is your view of the myths and the misconceptions that, that exist when it comes to business negotiations? Uh, between uh, for, from a gender point of view. From a gender point of view, or just from a general point of view. Yeah, I think I think I think a negotiation is always that is something also you you always said. I mean, it's it's about a win-win situation. It's about you know, I remember a few things I learned from your training, and uh, don't think that negotiation is the dividing things in the middle. Huh? So uh, when you negotiate with someone, don't try to always find a way of giving any everything by two. Or I think negotiation is just making sure that uh, you've got a service you want to sell, someone wants to buy from you, or someone wants to uh, just make sure that you do it in a way that at the end of the negotiation, everybody feels happy about it. I think that's that's the key, and I'm very keen on that every time. I'm always thinking about what the other party is going to get out of it. 
uh, as much as what I'm going to get out of that negotiation. And uh, what I want in any case is people being happy on both sides because I know that I'm going to have to see with those people again, deal with them again. They're going to come around and another walk of life and uh, it's a long-term thing. So uh, I'm really happy now. I've been in business for a long time to always see yeah. people or remember you know, how we, we negotiated and, uh, and how it was always mutually beneficial. Okay. And, and so when you've seen things go bad, when negotiations have failed, what, I mean, what's your view? If you were going to offer somebody some advice and say, look, don't make these mistakes, what would you say? Yeah, I think I always, always think what someone's going to get out of it. I, I always look at the other party as well. In, uh, uh, and, uh, and you always have a walk away point as well. So don't also go beyond what you think is good for your own company. I think that uh, you've got to have enough confidence and enough pride in, in what you do to say, I'm not going any further than that. That's it, take it or leave it. And for that, you need a certain amount of, of confidence. And as the head of the company, I can do that easier probably than some of my employees. I can just, you know, I can walk away. I've had some, some pretty uh, heavy discussion with retailers in the UK where, you know, at some point I said, OK, I'm not, I'm, I was ready to lose the business, except yes. and not being treated the way I was treated. And I remember when they're picking up the phone and say, look, you're lying and uh, uh, I, I am never going to do business with you again. And I was an account that was wow. probably representing 7% of my business. And... But because I, did, I felt that the way they were going about it was lacking integrity and, and I stood up for my principle and, and happened what happened. They kept dealing with me. They increased their business. People in the business appreciated the fact that I stood up for what I think was right. Yes. And um, so I think that in negotiation, you need to be, uh, yeah, you need to be confident. You need to know how far you're prepared to go. Integrity for me has always been a, a thing. That's, that's the one thing you keep with you in your career. You know that, you know, yes. and people who always... Uh, if you do something, it always comes back or in a way or another. So, uh, yeah, and then uh, I enjoyed negotiating. Yeah? So that's also something. I mean, I'm in sales and that's, uh, that's what I've always enjoyed doing. So a nice deal that, that works for both parties, a good thing. That's good. And so one of the interesting things that I've, um, that I've uncovered over the last 15 years or so of doing this is that w whenever I work with an organization and I ask them, what is the harder negotiation? The one with the external stakeholders, so the one with your vendors or your, or your customers, or the one that you have internally in the organization. They, they always say the internal one's yeah. tougher. Yeah, I think internally it's always, uh, especially you can imagine a company like ours where we have had to change and adapt all the time. You need to to lead the, the, the people internally into different directions. So it's, it's a constant level of ne negotiation in a way to make sure you convince them on the new project. And, and uh, so... Uh, yeah, it is internally, it's, and it's, it's a lot more at stake as well, I suppose. So, uh, yes, I find internal negotiation. But also there, I, I apply the same principle, you know, at the end yes. of the day, I, uh, I might people, doubt, right? but I never hesitate. Yeah. I always get, get, you know, and you need to decide, you need to, uh, to have that confidence of, uh, of looking long term what you want to do, and, and you're showing the way, but you, you've got to, uh, to make it happen, I suppose, that's... Uh, the same principle yeah. is dealing with people. I think that's yeah. that level of empathy I was talking about earlier. That's yes. uh, always trying to, to think how the other party will, will react and will, will receive the information you've given them. Or yeah. and, and so what, what you're saying, what's interesting is we see, like you are clearly successful at doing that, is that a lot of people are successful at the internal negotiations. It's because they don't really approach, uh, approach that any differently. No. To, to the external ones, they recognize yeah, exactly the same principles yeah. are valid in that context. Yeah, yeah. That, that's clear. So, so, Corinne, just from your perspective, I mean, obviously you guys do business all over the world. If you, if you were to say, um, you know, culturally it's worthwhile to consider some things when it comes to negotiation, are there, are there any pointers or any uh, experiences you've had, you know, taking into account cultural backgrounds and, well, and sensitivities? Well, for sure, in certain countries, I know you you, you can't. Apply. I, I've decided to go not to go in countries where I could not stick to the level of integrity that I'm that I want to to, to deal with. So there are some countries where, and we're privileged in consumer electronics where actually we can deal in country. We can choose the countries we want yes. to deal with. So so that's so, so I look at those cultural differences. Uh, now there are some countries that I'm, I may stay clear of. Um, otherwise, in countries where you have different really different culture, like like India, for example, I think that uh, uh, yeah, we adapt to local culture. I mean, we we have got five thousand people, forty five nationalities. We deal with people all over the world. I think the the cultural differences is a great big asset. Uh, in a company like ours, when you want to innovate, you innovate because you get different points of views 
with each other, to challenge each other. If we all think the same, you don't innovate. Yeah. So, uh, so I think that uh, we, I was having a lunch the other day with all the, the women engineers, uh, actually here in Amsterdam, and uh, uh, from one particular division, and there were as many people as there were nationalities. So it was, yeah. and you could see that there was a lot of the, 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 the quality of the debate and was, uh, was very rich as a result. Yeah. So uh, we really embraced cultural diversity and, uh, and, and, and exploit it in a way, if you see, just yeah. by, look, yes. by, by looking at how we all look at the world with different pair of glasses, men, women, and different culture. So, so it's diversity and harmony rather than, than uniformity or, or Yes, it's, you want yeah, to, yeah. you know that we've all gone through different education system, we all have different sets of values, yeah. we all have different religion. Yeah. I think that's actually a lot of richness and uh, it allows us to, uh, to adapt to, uh, I think that's one of the reasons as well why we've managed to adapt to, to the changing circumstances because we have a very diversified... And you've been receptive workforce. to new ideas. And you've yes. Been, well, you've encouraged it. Never yeah, we encourage a lot of... Uh, we encourage innovation throughout the organisation. We don't have a chief innovation officer. You know, I, I believe that uh, one of the things is to try to get everybody in the company to carry the, the mission of the company and, and, yeah. and adapt and innovate. That's great. And, and so, Corinne, perhaps a bit more personally, but... What's, what's been your, your formula for success in, in, in business? You know, so if you say, and I don't know if you can reduce it to one or two things. I know earlier on when we were talking, you were talking about resilience, certainly from a Tom Tom perspective. But personally, yeah, what I was think your personally view? Personally, as well, I think you know, when, when you, first of all, we, we started with four people and then we, we kind of went for so this massive growth. And before, you know, one day I woke up and we had, to, we just put the Atlas, we had 5,000 people, two culture to integrate, then we get the crisis. So I think resilience has been something that went through. I think uh, I'm someone who tend to see always the, the glass half full. So I think yeah. in, in, in as entrepreneur as well, you've got to, um, you, you need to, to, posi to look at things in a positive way, because otherwise it just drags you down. Yes. Uh, you need a certain level of madness in believing and, and that you can you yeah. can change the world a little bit. I know that sounds a bit um, uh, you know, caricature, but it's uh, a stereotype, but, but you do think fundamentally you can change the world a little bit. Yes. Yeah. You know, and 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 that's and that's a driver, that's a motivator as well. You know, if if I do that, we're gonna, with navigation, we change the world of millions of people. The the, the way they, they navigate. Save lots of marriages. We right? save a lot of marriages, <laughs> and uh, but if you think about it, it's yeah. only twelve years ago that those products were democratized, and today nobody could drive without navigation. And when I see the products as being, you know, one of the best inventions of the last century, you kind of yeah, you think that's it. I've, so I've, I've, I've put that stone there and I'd, I'd like to put another one so you look at the other yes. type of problems you can solve and now we're looking at, at anonymous driving and we know that mobility will change and cities become recognition and we've got the tools the technology and the people to again make a big contribution so that's that's a great motivator so I think that resilience when things the chips are down never losing sight of the long term and what you're contributing and, and the changes the difference you're trying to make to whatever and uh, working with, with great people, I think for me it's uh, uh, personally that, that gives me a lot of energy uh, yes. to, uh, to work with a team that I respect and uh, having a bit of fun in the process and not losing sight. So we don't look behind. The, the other day someone was asking me, well, what do you regret the most? And, and I said, well, actually, you know, I don't think in those terms. Yes. Because otherwise, uh, I could spend to dwell my my life on it. So yeah. you don't. I don't think in terms of regret. I think well, I've learned a lot. Uh, would I do some things differently? Probably. Uh, but hey, at the time, I did what I thought was best with the okay. knowledge I had. So I think you just you just keep looking ahead and and stuff you can change and impact. But so, so, so when you say resilience, I just pause there for yeah. a moment. I mean, is that a euphemism for soaking up pain? Uh, I, I mean, talk to me about. What, yeah, what, what that means to you, resilience. You know. Yeah, I think you don't give up, and I think you are you. Yeah, when 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 things are you know the the, the great moments of doubt that you have because you, of course you've got yeah. them, especially yeah. you uh, you keep going. You uh, yeah, I suppose a kind of pain. I don't again. I don't translate it like that. I just yes, uh, yes. It, it's after the fact. You think, oh my god, I didn't manage to get through that. But um, again, with a strong team of people as well, we kind of help each other. I think we have a very strong team at the top of TomTom, Tom and uh, uh, we've been through all of this amazing journey together. And I think we, we help each other a lot mentally as well. Um, 
but um, but I don't experience it as, as massive pain. You know? I always get up happily in the morning. I always yeah. look at what I can do. So yeah, it's it doesn't. Uh, it's more. But it's finding the opportunity in yeah, every, it's, in but every but adversity what, rather yeah. than focusing on the problem. Is yeah, you don't focus pain? on the problem. You just yeah. think, what what can I do? You know, even now I have quite a, a pretty big challenge in front of me. You know, how do you get the team with you? How do you get them to follow you? Uh, you know, you're going to change everything. You're organized. You uh, in tech, we need to be quite agile and do yeah. things quite often. Uh, so that that keeps me busy, and I'm more thinking, I'm more focused on that than than the issues, because issues, uh, you know, yeah. I can only do something if I can impact. Uh, it's no yeah. point dwelling on stuff that you can't do anything about. Yeah. So I, I try to impact the things I can change. So, so, so Corinne, I know you know with your charitable foundation, etc., you have a heart also for, um, you know, for, for 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 equipping others with the skills they need to succeed, and then and, and so. Often in, in business, people speak to the success of, of, of mentorship and role models, etc. Have you, in, in, in your career, have you benefited from, from mentorship, from role models that have, that have contributed to the way that you see the world and, and the way that you succeed? Yeah, that's funny. So I never had any business role model, to be honest. I think I, the, the, the mentorship, we're probably, the, I would say that the Tom Tom management team, we kind of mentored each other more because yes. we have different skill sets and uh, by helping each other along the way. I think in terms of inspiration, and it maybe goes back to that resilience thing, my, every time I have a bad moment, I think about Ellen MacArthur crossing in the ocean on top of her mast. And, um, and I think if she did that, I can do anything, you know? And uh, yes. she's on her own there, and she's five foot nothing, she's the same size as me. She's on the top of that mast, and she, uh, anything can happen. And she's got the, because she hasn't slept for days. She goes on top there, and she she, she, she rounds the cape. And I, so those are the people that inspire me, who go beyond their, their level of, of, of physical ability, if you want, because with a great belief that they can, they can make it happen, even from the outside where it looks like pure, madness yeah. and uh, I've had the privilege of meeting her as well a couple of times and I think those are the people that that inspire me more than I suppose people in uh, in business I look more yes, at that yes, side yes. and women are strong women I mean they are they are I, I admire strong women as well they, more people like uh, Christine Lagarde for example I look at the yeah. stuff she's had to put with and look the way she's uh, doing at the uh, FME yeah. and uh, uh, Madeleine Albright, those women who've travelled over the world, a big yes. negotiator as well, and and, and yes. you know, if you yes. talking earlier on about dealing with culture yeah. and, and negotiation, I yeah. mean, that's certainly yeah. a good example well, of that. Well, and there's certainly some 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 strong women who are going to be leading negotiations in Europe just now. Isn't yeah, there? yeah, yeah, yeah. I've just uh, yeah, it's <laughs> interesting to see what Theresa May is doing. But I think yeah, it always it's funny. I always yeah. uh, when when. When the world goes to pot, normally the women's are being bought in. For say, you yeah. know, we, we made a little bit of a mess of it, but you <laughs> mind just picking things up and sorting it out. Thank you very much. Yeah. That's uh, that's exactly what happened in Iceland as well after the after the, the banking system where they they, they brought yeah. a whole lot of women to to fix things. But uh, so so joke aside, I think the people who inspire me, I yeah, really really do, do people who just uh, go beyond what you think is possible and uh, yeah. just by pure mental strength, I think and and. And believing they can. Okay, and uh, and so Corinne, you know, maybe last couple of questions. But if you if you were to give some specific advice, let's say somebody's just started their career and they they're in the corporate world and they you know, they have a desire to succeed, what would what would be your your advice that you give somebody? Well, first of all, I think in the first ten years of your career, you've got nothing to lose, so just take risk. I think that that would say to try you. You, if you come out of university, you don't know, or you set up a business, you, you've got so much to learn. And I think the only way to learn is to, to fail. I mean, you will take risk and do things you think are right. So don't be scared to fail, uh, because that's where you're going to learn the most. Um, the first 10 years of your career, you will learn a lot about yourself, what you're good at, what you're not so good at, and, 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 and ask yourself what's been a good day. And I do that also when, when I recruit. You know, what, at the end of... What, wh where do you get your energy out of? Try to analyze what really makes you tick, because you're going to have to work for a long time. So yeah, you try to really spend time trying to find out what, how to get the best out of yourself. And you can only do that by trying stuff that you think you cannot do. So that's, that's that out of your comfort zone. So that's what I would recommend. And uh, surround you with people who give you energy instead of people who don't give you energy. You know, it's, uh, uh, it sounds pretty trivial, but uh, there are people who suck energy out of you. Just keep them at bay. Um, and um, yeah, and 
I think success for me is being able to, to have a career and do something where you, it doesn't feel like work. So that whatever you do, you get the motivation, the energy in yourself, and you, uh, you're happy with what you do. And I think that's, that's the biggest uh, recipe for success. And uh, work with people you like and uh, try to make a little bit of a difference. But you can only do that if you've taken risk. And I think if you don't take risk, uh, it's very difficult to, uh, to see quite how far you, you yeah. can go. And would you, would you perhaps, you know, last question, Corinne, would you, would, would you have, uh, and it might not be different advice, but would you have something specific to say to, to young women, maybe women entering, you know, industries where it's traditionally been dominated by males, engineering, even technology, some of these areas, would you have specific um, advice or counsel you'd give them? Yeah, I, I think so. It's the advice I give my own team is uh, don't think you, so you, you know, I always realize that the girls I look at their CVs, they're always uh, so qualified. They're so brilliant. I mean, they are, you know, they've, they've gone far. They are, uh, and, and they always, they, they don't speak up. So I think I would say just speak up. You know, just if, if you see an opportunity in the company, raise your hand, go and ask your manager. Make your manager aware what you want to do, what your level of ambition is, because it's very difficult for us to read that. Don't think, oh, my manager will see I'm working really hard and he will think about me next time there is something. He won't. He won't, not because he's a bad guy or a bad woman, but it's just because it's just not the way it works. We, you've got to put yourself forward. So put yourself forward. Uh, try to uh, look at the opportunities in, in an organization. So that's, that's one. Two is, please come back once you've had children. Uh, yeah. You know, it's uh, you can you can consult both. I think you can have a career and have a family. Um, there's a lot of women in the world who don't have a choice and, and manage yeah. both. If you have a choice, then you're very lucky. And I think that's uh, do you do what you think is right for you. Uh, I, I think you know women are each other's worst enemy. So we're always judging. If you work, it's not good. You don't work, it's not good. It's never good. So you may as well do what you think is right for you. At least it's going to be right for someone. It's right for you're yourself. You're going to get judged anyway. You're going to judge anyway. So you may as well just just do what what intimately you feel right. And we have here women who who think they can come back and can't, and that's fine. You know, if if you you feel that you want to stay with your with your children, then that's okay. But if you feel, I also see a lot of women, especially in Holland, that, are, that where there's a lot of peer pressure under to come back. And I said, well, do what you think is right, and uh, and and if you want, you can reconcile both. So. Uh, but put your hand up and, uh, and build confidence. And that's an easy thing to say, because people often ask me, how do you build confidence? Well, I say, well, concentrate on the, on the positive stuff. You know, when you've had a bad day, instead of thinking all the stuff you've done wrong, think all the stuff you've done well. And, uh, you know, when, when, uh, and that, that helps you, because you know, most of those young women have had, again, amazing, uh, done amazingly well at school, yes, they're well yes. qualified. So, uh, and they're very successful, they lead successful yeah. projects. Think about the stuff you do well, don't be too hard on yourself. Take risk and believe in yourself. Yeah. It's, uh, it's just interesting what you're saying in, in closing. I mean, we, we, we know, for instance, some of the research you know, done, done in Scandinavia, I know about you know, um, the average level of remuneration or reward for women versus men. Turns out that even though, you know, whilst they have you know, a focus on positive discrimination to make sure that there's equality, Women on average still get paid slightly less than men yeah. because they're not as aspirational or demanding. They're not as demanding. Yeah, and, and, and so maybe some of the learning is, you know, push the boat out a little. Go yeah. and ask. Yeah. 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 Corinne, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate the insights. And, uh, wish you all the best and your, uh, you know, your, your your comeback as it were. Thank you. Thank you very much.